And here is our tale of the tape. This from the featherweight division, a couple of youngsters, 23-year-old Raymond Ford, who, let's be honest, many felt was gifted his last win in a decision. He wants to prove the naysayers wrong as he squares off against Richard Medina, who's from San Antonio and is full of confidence. Ten rounds. Medina admitting this was a huge step up for him, but one he did not hesitate to take. Watch your feet, gentlemen. Just like Bam Rodriguez, who stepped in on a few days' notice to beat Arlo's Quadras, become a world champion. Medina knows this is his huge opportunity. Big opportunity right now. He's coming up short with the speed factor, but I like the punches that he's throwing, the counter shots that he's trying to land on Ford right now. Trying to come over the fast jab of the Savage. You know, talking to Raymond Ford this week about the adjustments that he made after that last fight. He says he's going to learn not to stay on the ropes quite so long. And to that point, he says whenever he finds himself on the ropes moving forward, he's counting to three. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And if he gets to three, he says, I'm getting out of there. So watch for that if Medina puts pressure on him tonight. I was born in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. It's great, Todd. <laughs> And you can see, see the fast hands, that fast jab of Ford. What I like about Medina is he's a thinking fighter. He's looking to time you. I mean, he has, like I said, he has good fundamentals, good combination puncher, and if he gets on the inside, he can dig nicely to the body as well. Medina, plenty of amateur experience, said he was 113 as an amateur and won five national titles. So he claims to be very prepared for this, despite only being 21. Yeah, but Ford was a national champion as well, winning a lot of tournaments on the big stage. And you can see that he's adjusting well to the pro style. You know, he's not just all speed anymore. He knows how to put pop behind those punches as well. Just like that. That right hand scores right on the ear. Gets Medina off balance. Those are some trunks that Raymond Ford's wearing. Oh, he's always stopping. Nice right hand from Medina. Yeah, that came up short right there. That would have been bad news for Ford. And yes, uh, Raymond Ford oh, told us he is starting an OnlyFans page, but no nudity. No nudity on Raymond Ford's OnlyFans page. <laughs> who is doing everything right. See, I like that body shot, but it wasn't enough right there. You're inside. Bang away at the arms of Ford. Bang away at the ribs, the elbows. Touch anything Ford gives you. Little short shots on the inside from Medina. Yeah, I like those little short shots. And right now, if Medina is allowed to you know, stay in the chest of Ford. That's what he should do. Use his head to keep that, keep Ford from breaking, breaking the distance. You know, this is the first time that I think Ray Ford is having fun in there. He's smiling. He looks so relaxed. I think he's enjoying this and doesn't feel the pressure that he has in the past. That's called experience. But I've seen him look relaxed. But, but normally he's just comfortable uh, pop shotting. Right now he's trying to hurt Medina. These are hard shots. Even the jabs. He's turning the knuckles. You know, a lesson Medina can take away from this fight, and a lesson all fighters can take away when you're fighting a mover like Raymond Ford, it's something, frankly, that Ronnie Rios needs to take into, into account going into his fight against MJ Akhmedalia. To slow down a mover, Sergio, you've got to work the body. You've got to hit him in that midsection to take some of that mobility away. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be able to touch the upper body or the head of someone so fast like Ford, but you can touch the elbows, you can touch the ribs, you can touch the hips. You gotta hit anything you can to try to stop the mobility. So Ray Ford dances, smiles, and shines his way to a very impressive victory here in the Lone Star State. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action here in San Antonio, we go to the judges' score totals. Tim Cheatham and Steve Morrow, 100 to 90. Ruben Carrion, 99 to 91. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And now, the WBA Continental and IBF North American Featherweight Champion, Raymond Savage.
Well, here's our tale of the take live from San Antonio, Texas again for the unified welterweight championship of the world. Actually, it's undisputed. Even better than unified. Undisputed. 37-year-old McCaskill. Five foot six, three inches shorter than Alma Abara. And she'll have a two-inch reach advantage. Can this Mexican upend the cast killer? If she can catch McCaskill coming in, being over aggressive, she might change the tempo of this fight. Well, McCaskill said, I feel like I need to knock her out. Boy, she's going for it right away, not wasting any time. Look at the cast kill him, and Abara's landing some punches of her own. Absolutely, I mean, this is just overly aggressive by McCaskill, but like you said, Chris, they have no respect. Oh, and she caught him with the right hand. That buckled the knees of Abara. And you can see Abara still trying to shake that off. She's staring up, blinking her eyes. A wild brawling style from Jessica. And again, right up the pipe. She's not letting Abara settle in at all. She knows that this is the biggest fight of Abara's life. No, and I love the fact that McCaskill started off so fast, but she, has, she, she does have to be careful. Abara has a long, rangy, strong right hand, just like that. Good nice uppercut down the inside. Say, she caught Jessica on the inside with a right uppercut. Still a little bit sloppy. You know, Barra's plan can't be to just trade with McCaskill. She knows McCaskill's gonna try to get the inside. Let that jab go. We saw a great jab from Raymond Ford in the last fight. Release that jab and fight off it in this round. Nice right from Jessica. And Abara continues to hold on. Big right hand by McCaskill. And I think Abara was holding on because she got rocked right there. She fell up oh. again. That right hand has been money for McCaskill. Yeah, Abara has got, he, she's shook right now. Everything's are under. Every time Abara ties up, she's either looking at her corner or looking up at the monitor opposite the ring to look at the clock. Big left hand, overhead left right there from the south part stands from the cast killer. Well, Bora, I think saying, you know what? I'm gonna go out on my shield. Yes, she is. I mean, they're exchanging big leather. That's sh big shots right there. Rick Ramos yelling to take a point. And he's right. Abara continues to hold anytime she gets inside. But look, it, it is a tactic for a bigger fighter to lean on a smaller fighter. Abara's got to make sure that in those clinches, McCaskill is carrying her weight as well as her own. Tyson Fury in the heavyweight men's boxing division does it as expertly as anybody. Oh yeah, I mean, we, they teach you that in the gym. And they also teach you not to, not to hold up the weight of the bigger opponent. Take a knee. Look at Jessica show more head movement. And then they play Twister. That's athleticism by McCaskill and obviously strength. It takes a strong back to have that upper body movement like that. Strong legs. This is only the second fight for a bar in the United States. Her previous one came against Candy Wyatt in August of last year. And there, Sergio, it feels like exactly what you just said there. McCaskill felt the weight of Ibarra, took the knee, Ibarra goes tumbling to the canvas. Very smart on McCaskill's part. Well, this is not aesthetically pleasing, especially from Ibarra's point. McCaskill just missed a big right hand right there. Ibarra didn't even see it. Nice shot there from Abara. And that just seemed to no. get Jessica upset. No, there she goes. It was a left hand she comes Casco. again. And Tom, this is what you missed right here. Big left hook. Right on the shot right there. You, you caught him ball because the back one towards it. It was the Casco's left hook. That bracket shook Alba Ibarra. That really hurt her right there. Don't come out, don't 
come out. If you don't want to come out, then don't come out. Hello? If you don't want to come out, then don't come out. That's it. And they're taking it off. If you don't Chris, what is going on? All right, so I just went over to the corner to try to figure out what was going on between Ibarra and her manager, Hector. And she was yelling at Hector, saying, if Jessica's going to keep holding me like this, I'm not going to fight. I'm going to go home to my kid. She quit. I think it was the punches that were landing, the aggression, the sheer aggression of McCaskill, the relentlessness, and of course that left hook that bothered and shook you in that last round. And now it's time for the co-main event, tale of the tape. It's for the WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight World Championship. Ronnie Rios, 32 years old. He's about two inches taller, but it's Akhmedaliev who will have a slight one inch reach advantage scheduled for 12 championship rounds. Can't hold back, let it all go. Well, he is pushing the pace now. Ronnie Rios. Coming off of a COVID infection, said that the first fight back had hurt a little bit when he run. It was tough to get his win back, but now he says he's 100% feeling really good. Chris Mannix, how's your scorecard look? I've got three rounds of none in favor of Akhmedalia. Rios is having his moments, but they're largely moments operating off the jab. He's got to close the distance like this, make it more physical on the inside. I think Rios got hurt by a left uppercut. No, I think it was a body shot, Sergio. Yeah, left uppercut of the body. Is right in the start. Yeah, Exactly where he hurt him to the body. He's going upstairs, touching him, trying to get that left hand up so we could sneak in underneath. It reminded me a little bit of Arturo Gotti when he took that body shot and just wouldn't go down and just stayed up against Mickey Ward. So kudos to Rios for grinding that out and avoiding a 10 8 round. And he caught him. That's right, half from Rios. He knows this is it. He knows this is make or break. Yes, he recovered. He was resilient, and now he's coming forward, looking to hurt Akhmedalia. Well, taking that shot to the midsection probably wasn't in the game plan for Ronnie Rios, but this is the fight he wants to see break out. And what a difference a fight makes in our last fight. And Barra quit on her stool because she couldn't take the pain and punishment. Rios is driving and grinding through it. trying to move away from that left hand. If that left hand is no longer a factor, he's going to change it entirely and move away from the right hand. Boy, that right hook is money for MJ. Akhmedalia may, may be a one-armed fighter right now, but that right hook is enough. He's rocking and hurting Ronnie Reels. And he's throwing it over and over and over again. How incredible would it be if MJ Akhmedalia with one hand can stop a rugged veteran like Ronnie Reels. He's still throwing the left a little bit. It's not completely ghosted. But he is right hand heavy. And that's a heavy right hand. Oh, look at Reels coming out and lands a right. Oh, a nice right hook by Reels. Starting off fast. Getting a lot more aggressive, cutting off the ring now. Maybe he's finding that second win. A body shot by Rios right there on the inside. Well, I think he might hurt Akhmedalia with a straight right hand down the middle. Well, Rios 
Rose needs a KO. No surprise there. The Uzbekistan warrior, Murajan Akhmadaliyev, has been fantastic tonight. And there's another flurry from him. You got to love Akhmadaliyev, who has to know that he's up on the scorecards, fighting like he's down, going for a knockout. And I think he hurt Reels to the body, and he, he senses Reels is weak to the body. It looks like MJ is going for the finish here. He isn't just trying to survive, he's trying to thrive. Yeah, I think right now he had Ronnie Reels hurt. He caught him with the right hook to the temple. Left side of the temple, Reels is hurt. These are heavy shots that Akbadali is landing. Those overhand rights are so stiff, and they're getting right around the guard of Ronnie Reels. MJ is a good fighter, but you know, great fighters close the show in the late rounds, and that's what Akbadali appears to be trying to do here. And how oh, he got him with a body shot, a big body shot. Reels crouching over, and he finally takes it. Tremendous performance for Murajan Akhmadalia, and there is only one fight to make in the 122-pound division. Akhmadalia, Stephen Fulton for all the belts. And here's the tale of the tape. Young Lion versus Old Lion. 22 years old is Jesse Rodriguez. SSR is 35. Rodriguez will have a long reach advantage, four inches longer than Rungbasai. So Rungbasai, much more flat-footed, but Sergio, that's where his power comes from. He can sit down on those punches. That's where his power comes from, but he's going to have to be more fluid with his footwork because he's not going to be able to keep up with this young champion that moves from angle and shifts from side to side. I'll be honest, Sergio, talking to Sorungvisai this week, I don't get the sense that he's looking or thinks he's going to win a decision. He knows he could be down quickly in this fight, but he believes if he can slow Bam down and force it into a fight, that's how he can win. Shut jet right there, snapping the head back of Sorungvisai. I love the fact that Bam Rodriguez is coming out respecting the power of Sarungvisai. Left hand got in there for SSR. Hard jab there by Bam Rodriguez. Oh, big straight left followed by a jab. Good sequence there for Rodriguez, and that forces Rungvisai to go forward. Terrific right hand by Bam Rodriguez there. Took, uh, almost took Sarungvisai off his feet. It was a check right hook, and it started by banging him with feints. Foot feints as we're making some room to fight. Bang. How about the number of jabs from Rodriguez? And some of those jabs, Sergio, as you mentioned before, are defensive jabs. They're going to knock Sorunga's eye off his timing. They're defensive jabs and they're power jabs. Look at that. Oh, the, hand. the glove almost touched. This is beautiful power boxing right here. Bam Rodriguez is playing chess. Picking you apart with that jab, stepping back and catching with the power counter shots. The game plan has been executed to perfection so far for Jesse. But it's a long, long way to go for Bam Rodriguez. Or is it? Can Rodriguez blast him out of there? I'll tell you what, Jesse Rodriguez grew up watching these super fly fights between Sorungvisai, Chocolatide, Estrada. 
Quadras, Brian Valeria. He watched all these great fights. Some of them he watched in person. So it really is a dream come true for him to share the ring with these legends. Let's look at Chris Mannix's scorecard through six rounds. Yeah, I've got it six rounds to none in favor of Bam Rodriguez. And quite frankly, none of these rounds have been that difficult to score. Bam is dominating with his skill from the outside and against the heavier-handed fighter, at least theoretically, he is landing the bigger shots. And he's hurting. He's hurting so long with such to the body now, which is opening up the right hooks upstairs. Just like that. Are we seeing out with the old and in with the new? A left hand sends Rodman Sagan. It was an overhand left that caught him at an angle. Right on the temple. Hey, give me a ball. So one of the fights said that he slipped. That was a punch. What a statement it would make for Jesse Rodriguez to stop Teresa Castro Rungasai. He's outpowering the powerful. Don't get carried away. Don't get overconfident. Go back to the feints. Go back to the jab. Go back to the angles. He put Carlos Quadras down, and he's put Teresa Castro Rungasai down. A little surprised that we haven't seen more of a body attack from Sor Rungvisai. He knew Whoa. Jesse was going to move around. He's got to find a way to slow him down, keep him in front of him for these later rounds. And I'll tell you what, guys, I don't like the body language of Sor Rungvisai, how slow he's punching, and how hard Bam Rodriguez is landing these shots. So Rungvisai told us in the fighter meeting, stand in front of me if you dare. Well, Rodriguez has dared, and he's put Rungvisai down already and Bam Rodriguez also said that he believes he can stop the tough fighter from Thailand big straight left from Bam caught him on the right as well and you can just sense the confidence oozing out of Rodriguez as he cracks him again upstairs downstairs look at him go Mark Cowboy the referee taking a long look at So Rung beside during these exchanges Bam is beating up So Rung beside beating him up and backing him up It's only a matter of time, guys. I'm telling you, I don't like the body language of Sorongasai. He has no legs. Oh, Sorongasai is ready to go! Bam Rodriguez in his hometown, putting on the performance of a lifetime. And we're going to see the end. It's over. It's over. Bam Rodriguez knocks off Sorongasai. Beat down Quadras. He's got him next. It's Chuckle like the Eagle next. we got a storm in San Antonio. The performance. Surprising. This was stunning. Not that Ben Rodriguez won, he came in.